What up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Pearl Daily, where I cover this week's treachery, debauchery, and craziness. Today, I have a special show for you, for you guys tonight. But before we start, guys, please go to theaudacitynetwork.com and sign up for our membership tier if you can. As you guys know, we have been demonetized for six months now, and it's been super, super rough as a business. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's been rough. Um, so if you can, please sign up for our yearly memberships. I have a vision for this network. I really want to create media that isn't so simpy. It's not so gynocentric and it's funded by the people for the people. I don't want any big backers. I, I just want it to be funded by the people. But in order to do that, you know, I need the everyday Americans like yourself to sign up. So it's $10 a month. It's 80 bucks for the year. So if you guys can, you know, find it in your hearts, then I can pay blessing this month. Right, blessing? Right, right. Help yeah. your brother out. Yeah, his salary is going to be late until we get like 10 more sign-ups. So <laughs> Colon Free blessing. colonization, you know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, guys, also let me know in the chat how you guys like the website. If there's any bugs or issues, please let me know. You know, um, we're, it's new. The app should be out. D do we get any confirmation from Apple when the app's uh, going to be? We're still waiting on that. We'll let them know when. when it's okay. The, a the app is coming. Um, and also what you get out of a membership is I'm always looking at the audacity chat first. Um, a lot of times I read their comments, you know, and you can super chat on there as well. Okay, so um, let me make sure that's up. I don't, is it streaming on the website? Oh, okay, I see it, I see it. All right, cool. Okay, so today's episode, I want to I wanna talk about traditionalism. So often from conservatives, I hear about returning back to tra traditionalism. You know, I, I keep hearing from women, we need to go back to the 1950s. And, you know, my question really is, which tradition? What part of history are we talking about? Because for the last 1,000 years, our culture has followed the tradition of romantic chivalry. Is that what the trad cons mean by tradition? So one common misconception is that romantic chivalry is a good thing. I disagree. Romantic chivalry and romantic love are the same thing. We still see it in the practice of men going down on one knee and in men pandering to women. It places women on a pedestal. And when you think about it, guys, the act of proposing, men used to only kneel to king, country, or God. Now they kneel to women. We have had women saying they're more special and more entitled than we really... See, guys, I can't even talk like this. YouTube's going to come for me. <laughs> Get the memberships, all right? Because I'm never getting monetized again. <laughs> you know, but seriously, for all of millennia, we have heard that women are more special, more amazing, more awesome than they are. And women wanting credit and privileges that they don't deserve. So, you know, and the outcome of all of this is male simping and female narcissism. I would guess that something like 70% of women are, are narcissists. And this all comes from a guy named William the Ninth, Duth, Duke of, and I don't know how to say it, Duke of Aquitaine. Quant, I'm sorry, I'm going to call him Duke of Aquitaine. <laughs> you know, so William single-handedly started the romantic love craze in the 10th century France, and it spread like fire throughout Europe into other countries. C.S. Lewis described the birth of romantic love like this, and this is paraphrasing. Everyone has heard of romantic love, and everybody knows that it appeared suddenly at the end of the 11th century in France. It's, specialized, it's a specialized kind of love whose characteristics include male humility, courtesy, curtsy, cur courtesy, adultery, and a religion of love. The male lover always acts subservient before his lady. Her rebukes, however unjust they may be, are the only virtues he dares to claim. Here, the man's service of love is closely modeled on the service of which a feudal vessel owed 
to his male lord. So again, they used to ma- kneel to lords, God, king, country, now women. The male lover is also referred the male lover is referred to as the lady's man and he addressed her not as my lady but as my lord. The whole attitude of romantic love has been rightfully described as the feudalism of love. Now, is this what tradcons mean when they say, let's return to traditionalism? What tradition do they want to go back to? Again, oftentimes we hear the 1950s as this golden era that everyone should go back to, but, you know, it still just seems like extreme simping for women. Lewis claims that romantic love also invites adultery a fact borne out by the earliest romantic stories. For example, Guevenir cheated on her husband with Sir Lancelot. Isolde cheated on her husband with Tristan. Put simply, romantic love tangles tend to be more important than the marriage, more important than the family, and more important than loyalty. And we see this today. Today, we see women, you know, leaving their families to go find themselves. What does that mean? If I want to find myself, I'm right here. (laughs) Blessing, have you always been able to find yourself? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What does that even mean? We just make up words. (laughs) Okay, so... The, and the adultery is not limited to sto- stories. It was also practiced by real people up to and including the present moment. Fleeting infatuations. Is this the kind of love that traditionalism people are trying to conserve? Chivalry and romantic love. Gynocentrism. Again, the deference to women. Why go to your Lord? Why go to the king? Just go to your woman. (laughs) And you see this in modern day when you say, let me ask my wife. Why? That's not the natural order of the world. If you guys are Christians, you shouldn't have to ask your wife anything. Why? What's what's the point? If you're going to make the decision anyway. Okay. Or do tradcons mean they want to conserve an older tradition that existed prior to romantic love, one that involved community-endorsed and arranged marriages? Are we going back to arranged marriages, tradcons? Maybe arranged marriages on the dating apps? (laughs) You know, I, I seriously, I don't have the answers, guys. I'm just asking the question here. What traditionalism do you go back to? Because I hear this a lot, and I don't even think most of them have looked into it. So maybe at the end of this, we're going we're gonna to have people call in and give their opinion. So let's talk about arranged versus romantic marriages. When Westerners think of arranged marriages, they tend to view it like being in a forced prison cell with an unknown crazy felon. But it was rarely that bad. The people who practiced arranged marriages describe a lot of different models ranging all the way from arranged marriage light, where a person can actually suggest prospective partners for parents to consider, and they can refuse to marry a candidate their parents selected for them. So let's just say you're 18 and your parents get together and they say, all right, here's 10 girls for you to pick from or vice versa. Then you pick your favorite, maybe. Um, Though, to what we might call arranged marriage strict, where there are no choices at all, you are just told who to marry, and that's all there is to it. There's a lot of variation in who gets to do the arranging. It could be mothers, fathers, entire families, older brothers, the church, elders, and community matchmakers. Some advantages claimed for arranged marriage are, one, having family or community members access Suitability of candidates for success, a move which accesses collective community wisdom. Having the same community give full and ongoing support because they feel they have a stake in the success of the marriage. 
The arranged marriage is not based in romantic infatuation, which is understood as a disastrous basis for marriage. And love is viewed as a growth project the couple can build on over time, which proves to be more enduring and also leads to a higher level of co contentment and happiness. To illustrate this, um, I want to show you guys a graph. Uh, here, you can pull it up. For marriages in India. So again, arranged marriage has a much longer length of marriage than love marriages. I, I mean, this when you think about it, love marriages sort of cater to the female. <laughs> Because we love making decisions, not our feelings. Men are much more logical. Much more logical. You can take it down, blessing. So the dotted line. Oh, yeah, yeah, wait, wait. Oh, and here is one for China. So you can pull this up. You know, romantic love plummets at two years and it grows stronger for arranged marriages. So that's the length of marriage. Love marriages go down. Now, I'm not saying that arranged marriages are perfect. I'm not saying it would even work today. But there are problems. And it's clearly... You know, there are there are problems with it. It's not perfect, but it's clearly superior to Western romantic love based marriages, because if you can fall in love, you can fall out of love. Successful marriages are not based on whims and the arranged couple that works hard at making their relationship last over time seems to have better outcomes. It's also superior because men are discouraged from marrying 304s and OnlyFans models or any unfit candidate who would bring dishonor to both themselves and the family. Marrying a hooker like Nala is viewed as bringing shame to the family, communities, and families seeking arranged marriages avoid such associations. Does the modern church understand how important this is? In ancient Rome, citizens were not even allowed to marry prostitutes and similar restrictions existed in many other societies. The majority of marriages worldwide today are arranged marriages. They are not a fringe occurrence, but actually constitute 55% of unions globally, depending on the country and customs. Some people may complain about arranged marriages being oppressive. Others tend to praise the practice is having advantages over Western romance based marriages. One person on X, um, FH House Bunny, said, um, Sadia, Sadia, you can show this. Sadia Khan, who's Muslim, has, who's Muslim, had an arranged marriages, had an arranged marriage said in a podcast that their belief is that it's not really about love. It's about being paired with someone who has a similar upbringing and hobbies. So when the passion fizzles, she said that the ultimate always happens. You both have something to keep you together in conversation, same morals, hobbies, etc. Not her biggest fan, but that made sense. Another said, I advocate for a system where either the father or daughter can suggest a prospective partner and either can veto if there's a disagreement. This protects the daughter without forcing her into a marriage she does not want. You can take it down. Oh, sorry, there's one more. I've, I've seen the eldest male relative veto power work on suitors spectacularly well. Even wealthy, worldly, and sophisticated women of 40 wasn't able to accurately assess a parasitic narcissistic suitor, but just the threat of meeting her brother caused him to move on to an easier prey. You can get rid of. Now, I don't know what country they're talking about, but their observations indicate that community oversight of marriage the brain's trust provide a number of advantages. Now, I'm not even arguing that we should go back to an arranged marriage. I'm just pointing out the facts. And the fact is, there's not one tradition, but many traditions. So 
I want, again, I'm going to clarify at the end of this, what traditions do tra trad cons want to conserve? Now, we have a video today by Paul Elam, and I'm going to pull it up really quick. Mm. Oh, here we go. All right, minute 328. Okay, we're going to pull this up. Okay, pull it up. The event is romantic love. Oh, wait. Ancient events shape all of us in one way or another. As I have mentioned in other videos on this channel, one such historical event is romantic love. Okay, turn up your volume. The normalized. It's up. Okay. It's up all the way. Are we going to start over? Okay. All of us in one way or another. As I have mentioned in other videos on this channel, one such historical event is romantic love. The normalized, unhealthy Western trend to follow the irrational, emotional, and sexual compulsions that come with infatuation in the pursuit of a happily ever after fantasy outcome in marriage. The allure and power of such a model is so tempting that we see many people charmed into the pursuit of it despite overwhelming evidence that it's a bad idea. We know, with a simple and honest examination of the historical record, that marriage, without significant, even overbearing, social pressure on people to stay together, simply falls apart. And that in the modern climate, it falls apart badly. We know this from the incidence of divorce and from the long-term misery index of many who don't divorce. There are some exceptions. People who stay married long enough to overcome the power struggles that romantic love fosters once infatuation fades sometimes manage to reach a state of mature love and mutual affection late in life. This is probably something that happened much more often when marriages were arranged and when, for other reasons, people felt compelled to avoid divorce. In fact, an analysis of Western and Eastern marriages that was published in the Journal of Comparative Family Studies yielded very interesting results. The article, How Love Emerges in Arranged Marriages, Two Cross-Cultural Studies by Robert Epstein, Mayuri Pandit, and Mansi Thakkar, 2013, reached past the obvious superiority of arranged marriages in terms of the incidence of divorce and into the area of relationship quality based on love. As is quoted from the abstract, the fact that love can grow in some arranged marriages and that this process can apparently be analyzed and understood scientifically raises the possibility that practices that are used to strengthen love in arranged marriages could be introduced into autonomous marriages in Western cultures where love normally weakens over time. The study authors attribute the increase in love to commitment and sacrifice for the relationship, but I think this is only part of the explanation. The social pressure to continue arranged marriages is likely what contributes to creating an environment where perseverance and sacrifice are possible, thus being credited with the growth of love. Now, I'm certainly not recommending arranged marriage, or any other marriage for that matter. The current legal climate in the West makes any marriage a foolish move. I'm simply pointing out that arranged marriages are far less likely to end in divorce and more likely to result in mature love than marriages based on infatuation and romance. That seems to be, at this point, a near scientific certainty. That is information that any man can and should consider when either considering a long-term relationship or considering why he might avoid one. Western marriage is a crumbling institution because there are no social pressures to keep it together once the illusion of romance fades and yields to reality. Those pressures ended when feminism obliterated the social stigma of divorce by getting laws changed and by lauding a lack of commitment and untrustworthy qualities in women. 
That was relatively easy to accomplish with the help of gynocentric men because romantic relationships were unstable to begin with. Romantic love, as we know it today, isn't even a human instinct or a product of our evolution. Its emergence was a historical event, a manufactured and marketed alternative model to traditional arranged marriages that became a remarkably resilient social trend. That started, as far as we can tell from the historical record, in the mid-12th century with the emergence of a rebellion against the stability of arranged marriages. Prior to popularizing the idea that infatuation and lust should result in marriage, an idea in hindsight that is quite insane, such practices were deeply frowned on as a mark of foolishness. Married couples could and did go through life perfectly well without it. Author Robert Johnson writes about marriage in India, recounting a Hindu marriage rite in which the bride and groom make the solemn but hopeful statement, you will be my best friend. Johnson goes further, saying, and I quote, In a traditional Hindu marriage, a man's commitment to his wife does not depend on his staying in love with her. Since he was never in love in the first place, there is no way he can fall out of love. His relationship to his wife is based on loving her, not being in love with the ideal he projects onto her. His relationship is not going to collapse because one day he falls out of love or because he meets another woman who catches his projection. He is committed to a woman and a family, not to a projection. Unquote. That is from Understanding the Psychology of Romantic Love, HarperCollins, 1983. Arranged marriages sometimes, maybe often, resulted in great fondness between husband and wife. Many may have reached a state of mature love that can only happen with years of coexistence as life partners, but they did not start as two people head over heels in love. They often started as two people who had never even seen each other. They had one other characteristic that makes those marriages decidedly different than modern unions in the West. By and large, they worked. Divorces were and are comparatively rare, not because couples were in love and inseparable, but just for the opposite reason. They worked because the marriage was not in service to the fantasy of sustained romantic love. Couples in arranged marriages were committed to building love in their relationship, which paradoxically led to feeling they had more control over love and relationships. This is in contrast to romantic lovers who complain of being tossed around on the waves of love with little or no control over any of it. Romantic love is ultimately a toxic agent that was allowed to overtake the institution of marriage partly because of the human weakness for self-indulgence and in large part because of cultural gynocentrism. Embracing lust infatuation and the chemically charged highs that come with it in a society that overvalues women is as easy as selling drugs. And we see the result of that today in what happens to most marriages based on transient emotions once social mores about divorced are removed. They fail like subprime loans. We can even see the quickly mounting damage to marriage in Eastern culture that has accompanied the importation of Western values. The impact is a dramatic reflection of what has been happening for the past 50 years in Western culture. Till then, in the West, we had managed to keep social pressures on marriage in a way that kept couples together. At my age, I remember days when people literally whispered about divorces because they were such a sensitive subject. Those days have passed, and divorce is not only no longer taboo, it is the expected outcome of most marriages spawning entire industries in the legal, social work, and domestic violence fields. The setup for all this misery can be traced through the narrative of our past, through the imagery of romantic love that has infected human consciousness and now drives Western men to confusion and ultimately to ruin. Most men, however, aren't comfortable too long in the skin of a victim. 
even when they have been victims in the truest sense of the word. When men are up against a brick wall, most tend to find a way out. We see the attempts to react and create a new narrative emerging, especially on the Internet. It is precisely the reverse of the revisionist feminist narrative about the sexes casting women as slaves chattel in a world run by and for men. Men, at least some of them, have begun to pen a story about freedom, self-awareness, and self-responsibility. The challenge to our failed script is a simple one. Are we willing to adopt a new one? Well, can an American man move to Canada or Mexico and adopt the local story as his own? Can an Australian man move to America and do the same thing? Sure they can. It happens all the time. All it takes is the willingness and the courage to embrace a different narrative, a different history of yourself, one that does not hinge on the insane pursuit of false love and dangerously conditional approval. There's not a man listening to this anywhere that cannot make that story unfold. The only question is whether he will or won't. Okay. I think that's, you can take it down. So, shout out to Paul Elam, you know, the GOAT. It's 1304, okay. So, the older model of traditionalism revolved around the family, and each member of the family was in service to the family unit. And the newer kind of traditionalism revolves around romantic chivalry. And the pedalist, pedalist, pedal, I can't even know how to say it, pedalistization, pedalizing? <laughs> I don't know, and putting wives on a pedestal. And the rest of the family has been forced to serve as some kind of backdrop against the grand romance gets staged. Hence, the practice of romantic date nights by traditionalists, along with narcissism, infidelities, divorce, and neglect of the kids that so often characterizes the romantic model of family. That model ends in disappointment, hatred, when the marriage doesn't end up feeling like a fairy tale. Romantic chivalry has turned men into simps, women into narcissists, and has weakened the families, weakened families in society. Now, I don't have the answers, and I'm not in the business of giving you marriage advice. I'm just a normal gal making my observations. So again, I beg the question, what part of traditionalism is worth conserving? And we have, I'm going to tell, guys, the people that I sent the link to, feel free to call in. We might put it in the chat if they're not ready. Um, you know, what, what part of traditionalism is worth preserving? I, can Americans go back and British people go back to arranged marriages? Is that even possible? Is there a new model that we need to come up with? Maybe we put it in the hands of matchmakers. Maybe it means extreme background checks for men and women. Maybe it means getting the families involved. And what does that look like when we have a society of single mothers? <laughs> Do we, is, what, what does the future look like? Is there a new model that we can do? What part of traditionalism is worth conserving? I want to, I'll put the, I'll put the link in the chat. One second. Let me, is any, no one's on yet, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. F it. I'll put it in the chat. Let me read from the Audacity Network. Sorry, guys, I had like a, a long thing. So, okay, one second. Well, give me one second. I'm going to read from the network um, chat. Um, Mrs. Ziegler, no freaking shit. For me, it's through. Wait, hold on. This is why my current marriage is successful. We put focus on building the family, bringing together our two small broken families into one stronger families. Um, for me, it's three strikes you're out or third time's a charge. charm. I don't recommend that, though. 
John Gelt says there's a reason why traditions like arranged marriages and the father giving permission occurred because women tend to pick badly. What do you think, Blessing? Do we pick badly? I, no one can hear you. You got to put it in your mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Do we? Oh, yeah. Huh? I mean, hell. What? <laughs> okay, bring up Shaw. <laughs> what? Stop snitching. <laughs> okay, bring up Shaw. Um, hi, Shaw. How are you? Hey, Pearl. I'm doing well. Can you uh, hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Um, so the question of today, and I thought you'd be the perfect person to, to ask this, because mm -hmm. um, if you guys don't know, Shaw actually used to calculate child support. That's what he <laughs> used to do. Yeah, I was a, a child support officer at a child support agency here in California. So I would do the guideline calculator and the DNA swabs and things. Yeah, so you, you had to see, you know, all you saw marriages at the end, you know, not, not a lot of people really get to see the insights of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I got to see the, uh, well, when they fell apart, exactly. Yeah. So in your, from your point of view, what parts of tradition are worth conserving? Well, you know, I hate to be a pessimist, but <laughs> I, it's okay. I'm a pessimist too. <laughs> I, I, it, I think there are obviously a lot of good aspects to conserve. Like I, I like the idea of people's families being involved in, uh, in the marriage choice and all these kinds of, of things, because they can help to spot someone who is, um, you know, maybe the woman's father or something can help see some negative aspects in the guys and, Maybe the mom or the the guy's mom or whoever can see the negative aspects in the in the woman he's choosing. And, you know, to some aspect, I think people do do this a little bit in terms of just introducing their bride to be or whoever to their families. But I also when I look at the laws here. It's hard because behaving traditional uh, gets kind of undone by the laws. And I've seen arranged marriages go through the child support <laughs> system, too. So, you know, even though the family pressure is there to keep them working, once they get here, a lot of whatever holds them together can fall apart. And um, so it, it's not it's not immune to anything. But, you know, if I was going to try to conserve anything, I'd just say it's the family involvement, especially when it comes to picking. But even typically in arranged marriages, at least from the cultural background I'm from, you know, you still have to get consent from both parties uh, for the marriage. But there are a lot of things that are similar here, you know, like with red pill talking points and high value man and all this stuff. It's just the differences is the family is going to come and grill you <laughs> about what you do for a living. Mm -hmm. uh, are you a good suitor or not for for the bride and all these kinds of things? And they're going to probably be a lot sharper at distinguishing that, you know, and especially when it comes to marriage, you kind of are marrying the whole family. So you can see a lot of stuff from their family. They can try to pick out stuff from your family. And I think that gives a clearer picture mm -hmm. and there's more social pressure there. But my, my opinion has always been just, you know, living in the U S the way our culture v, uh, views freedom, uh, especially nowadays, I think is uh, kind of incompatible with a lot of mm -hmm. traditional living. And I know that sounds crazy, but I, I kind of have this opinion that freedom used to be freedom from, you know, taxation without representation, freedom from uh, having soldiers quartered in your home and stuff like that. But nowadays it's more about freedom to <laughs> do mm -hmm. whatever you want, it mm -hmm. seems like. And it's hard to be traditional when, you know, people have the freedom to step outside of those bounds of traditionalism whenever they feel like it. So when it comes to aspects to preserve it's it's really hard unless you see updates in the law that make things happen and it, it makes me each did you see this uh soft guy era stuff that's been going on yeah yeah <laughs> lately? It, yeah it, it's really funny and it's it's i kind of view it as a men kind of transacting conditional masculinity where women have been conditionally feminine mm -hmm. And I just kind of see us moving the train along to, unfortunately, something that is away from traditionalism as far as the way our culture is now because of the way that we value freedom in these things. So what do you what is there any adaptation that maybe maybe th that we could do in the future? Like, what, what do you think the future will look like for people that do decide to get together? Well, 
I think the kind of provider thing will go away. Like, you know, women say they want men to protect and provide. And well, I think now that we have equal opportunity employment and all this kind of stuff, the provider thing could get split in half, but Mm -hmm. men, you know, will probably stop to do the protection aspect of that women, the nurturing. But when it comes to being a provider, especially with the way the laws are, I, I mean, I, I would not want to sign on the dotted line unless she has a, a similar monthly income to mine. And mm-hmm. in fact, I think maybe an aspect of traditionalism we can preserve is people marrying within class. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, <laughs> yeah. if you're doing very well, maybe think about marrying someone that that also has wealth if you're going to actually sign for that. But that's mm-hmm. that has its challenges too, because then it limits the pool of of who you can and cannot marry. But going forward, I think you know, what we're seeing now is um, less people actually getting officially married. I, I can tell you from from child support, if you go to the, the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement's website, that's the, the ones who report to the presidential administration, they, they synthesize a lot of data. And their most recent report will look at cases. And what they see is that a lot more people, especially in the millennial generation and going forward, uh, have never been married before. So it used to be a lot of people end up in the child support office were married, uh, but then they got divorced or whatever, and it slowly moved to know they had, you know, they were just never married, <laughs> more so than we've ever seen before. So I think going forward, it's not going back to traditionalism uh, I, in that way. I think we're going to see more female providers, actually, because I was yeah. thinking about it. I saw something that said there was a... a a diversity and inclusion intern that made 22 an hour and a fireman <laughs> made 22 an hour. And I was just thinking like, if I, if that was the household and one of them had to go to work and one of them had to stay home, what would be better for the kids? I well, mean, whoever's probably the bringing mom. more money in. <laughs> well, I was thinking like the, the mom working would probably make more sense. Cause she's not putting her life in danger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> cause there's oh, all these, yeah. there's all these useless overpaid jobs for women. I just think there's going to be, yeah. yeah, I think there's just going to be like a abundance of guys that just go to the gym and start marrying these chicks. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing about, about the soft guy era, because it's, it's almost like men just kind of touting their hobbies and stuff they're usually shamed for as not being masculine. It's like, Hey, buy me, buy me video games or or whatever. <laughs> but it's tough because, you know, when I look at myself, like if I was going to sign on the dotted line, you know, I, I date whoever, but if it came to marriage, then the question of how much do you make from the woman's side would be important to me. Mm -hmm. And from a child support perspective, it's not even about how much they made in the past. It's really about how much they make now per month, because that's what we use to calculate it. And, uh, you know, as, but, you know, then when you guys have kids, then, you know, she'll probably stop working, but then she can always go back to work and has some decent career option. Mm -hmm. Now, that that's the tough part because there are those biological factors, you know, that will limit who works and who doesn't. But Mm -hmm. the most comfortable marriage for a guy is um, if you're marrying a woman who makes money, because then if, if she decides to leave, I mean, she's going to be paying you. And uh, you know, I know that's not traditionally masculine, but that's, that's how I view things now. And I think with this soft guy era thing, a lot of them are starting to pick up on that because Mm -hmm. they're getting tired of watching guys get fleeced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw this. Then, yeah, I saw this article too that said men are going in debt from dating. It said people are, but we all know it's men. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh well, yeah. I mean, if men are expected to pay for for the dating activities, yeah. typically, it, it, you know, and even on instinct, I I always do. There are a few times where women are like, "Well, let me get it this time," and sometimes on pure instinct, I'm like, "No, no, no, don't worry about it. I'll mm-hmm. get it," just because that's what I'm conditioned to do. But if you're a guy and you're dating a lot, then yeah, it's gonna add up. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, well, you know, thanks for calling in. Um, yeah, no worries at all. I, I um, um, you're always a pleasure to have on. So, <laughs> any other thoughts? Just let me know. Um, any show, feel free. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, Pearl. Yeah, um, yeah, guys. So the question I really have for conservatives: what what part of traditionalism is worth conserving in the current structure? What part? Oh, we have a new member. We have a new member. Welcome, Ryan. Welcome to the to the network. Look at that. Um, what part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Also, 
Is there anyone else calling or no? Okay, you can put it in the chat then. Or I can put it in the chat, actually. Let me do it. Um, you know, why should men be traditional in a society that's not traditional? I'm going to pin this. Um, I'm also going to... What? I'm going to tweet this. What part of traditionalism is worth preserving. Um, accepting call-ins for, eh, let's say 20 minutes. Not sure if it's you. It says the X stream is losing connection. Let me look at the chat. I'd like to explore a new vetting process for marriage, bring back finishing schools for women so they can learn to be wives and mothers. What are the current adaptations today? What part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Wait, no. Hmm? Thought so. Usually someone will call in. Oh yeah, guys. Rules for the call-ins. Cameras on. If it's a loud background or shaky connection, I'm gonna have to drop you. Um, please let me see your hands. I don't, you know. Like camera here, hands here, sit down. You know, because is romantic love sustainable? It doesn't seem to the it doesn't seem to be the way it's going. But in a society that's filled with single mothers, can arranged marriages come back? What would that look like? What parts of traditionalism are worth conserving? Let's see. Okay. Do you know when the Dawson interview is going up? Uh, we're working on that probably on the weekend, yes. Okay, this weekend? Yeah. Ryan, if you're watching this weekend. What parts of traditionalism are worth conserving? Should women still be able to stay home? with the children? Do we deserve to stay home with the children? Is it fair to put men at such a, such a disadvantage financially if we choose to leave? What part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Yes. I got all day, guys. <laughs> no, I don't. I got like 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, and then I'll close it. Do we go back to the 1950s? Is that what we go back to? You know, it's interesting because the future seems to be going to polygamy. How would that work in traditionalism? It's really funny to see all these nerdy guys screaming at the alphas. Stop screwing all these chicks. Ah! <laughs> oh, Pearl, I have a discussion, actually, with, when it comes to polygamy there. Yeah, go ahead. Because you're saying traditional is is um, going back to polygamy kind of for the future. No, no, I didn't say that's traditional. I said the future is polygamy. We're already in it. Well, if you look back in biblical times anyways, everybody like one, two, two or more wives, really. So Do you want two or more wives? <laughs> Anyways, people are trading <laughs> <laughs> So in biblical times, they had multiple wives, huh? Yeah, Abraham, who which uh, Christianity, Jewish and Muslim, 
um, is based on. He had, he had two wives. Wow. Is that is is that what you're trying to do? I mean, I'm not bit I'm not <laughs> better than Abraham. <laughs> what? Maybe. <laughs> You'd be open, guys. One in the chat. If you could have two wives, would you do it? Uh-huh. One in one in the chat. If you do it. Two in the chat. If no, polygamy is trad. Look, and a lot of these dorky guys. This is what they do. The dorks come in and say, ah. Stop screwing. We have a lot of people that just joined in now. Stop screwing, guy. Okay, I'll let him in in a second. All the dorks come in. They say, stop screwing. They say, stop it. Stop it, Andrew Tate. Stop screwing all these chicks. And the women are like, no, no, we want to do it. We want to do it. And then it's like these dorky guys are like, stop it. Stop it. And I'm like, guys, women love sharing men. Do you know there are pickup artists that wear wedding rings to attract more women? <laughs> and then they'll say, but Pearl, you're not Catholic. You're so evil. And I'm just like, I can't change the way the world is. What am I supposed to do about it? Do you think me saying, Andrew Tate, stop having children with multiple people will get him to stop? Is that your plan? All right, let me know how that goes. Um, all right, um, you said someone's in there. What? What are the trolls? How do you know they're trolls? Because uh, of the stuff they are putting up in the comment section. <laughs> what are they putting in the comments? Yeah, no PG-18 stuff. I don't get it. Uh okay. Are, are they putting? Are they naked? The people on the uh, Zoom? They're starting to post some mad stuff in the comment section still. Okay, well, kick them out of the Zoom. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of them. <laughs> what is? Can I? Wait, send me a picture on my phone. I want to see what we're dealing with. <laughs> guys, guys, this is a serious conversation. I tried with the sister. The wife did not like it. I don't know if that would be a good way to go, Red Pill. That's not what I said. I'm just an analyst. I just, I look at the market and I'm like, you think I can stop these guys? <laughs> well, I mean, and the funny thing is, women will send nudes to married men, begging them. You think I could stop that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Did you text it to me? Yeah. On which phone? Oh, I see. Ew! <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, I guess we'll call it a night. You know, on, on that note. There's a lot of people. Do any of them have their cameras on? No. Okay, well, kick them. You got to kick them out of the Zoom. Yo, if you don't have your camera on, you're going off right Yeah, now. you're getting kicked out. We we lay, down the, we lay down the law here. And I'm going to report you as well. Yeah, I'm going to call the police. Yeah, guys, you should sign up for the audacitynetwork.com. Feel free to cash app, PayPal. I mean, help me pay blessing this month, you know. I also want to get one of those big news tables so I can bring on, like Pierce Morgan has, and I can bring on some feminists to debate. If there's any feminists you want me to debate, please DM them to me on Instagram or X. You know, I have a new Instagram. I went live on it today. It's just Pearly Things Official. And, you know, I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers. I was at like 400K. They deleted me. Too early for calls. People are scared. Well, I don't know what to tell you. 
20 people here. They're not scared. They're just crazy. I don't... What are we lo dealing... I, I, I wish I could see. All right, guys. Um, we got to find a better way to screen out trolls. We'll deal with this next time. Well, I think tomorrow... We're going to do an earlier show, um, probably around 4 GMT. I have to go to practice tomorrow. I have another week of volleyball, and then I'm done. I love playing volleyball, but I am so excited for this season to be over. <laughs> this... Everyone that's joining, please make sure your camera is on. You know, um, so tomorrow it'll be 4 to 6. Saturday, we're actually going to do a show. Um, Rachel Wilson's coming on, and we're going to talk about how women are statistically more violent than men. So we were going to dispel that myth. Um, and what other announcements? Oh, we might have someone joining the network soon. That, that'll be pretty exciting. Pretty, I won't say who, but it'll be pretty exciting if it works out. So feel free to sign up to the memberships because I want to build, I want to build them a really cool set <laughs> if, if this ends up working out. So, you know, try to get the yearly if you can. Anyone have their cameras on? Guys, you, this is ridiculous. All right, we're going to end the show. What? Okay, does he look like a troll? Was he sending nudes in the group chat? Hello. Um, hello. Could you put Hi, your, how are you? I'm good. Could you put your camera down or just like set it so we can see? Put the camera down. Yeah. Like put it put it on a table or something so the viewers can see oh. you. Okay. Like that? Yeah, better. Um, oh, okay. So what part I, of traditionalism do you think is worth conserving? Three things. Uh, God, country, family. Make sense? Mm -hmm. God, country, family is worth conserving? Well, in How God, you have the basic... West society values, right? Mm -hmm. Right to life, property. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for calling in. Okay, you know, fair enough, fair enough. What part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Do we get more or is it all trolls? Yeah, guys, I'm either, it doesn't matter to me. We either want to have the conversation or Pearl gets off early. <laughs> You know what I mean? It could go either way. <laughs> All right. Hello. You know. Oh. Hello. Could you turn off the TV in the background? Talk about how women are Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, would you mind putting your camera down, please? So I can see you fully. There you go. Perfect. Um yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, what part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Well, I think that uh, my personal experience, I have three children and blessed with seven grandkids and uh, great grandkids. Uh, my One of my biggest regrets is that uh, my wife went to work shortly after my daughters were born and uh i think a mother should be home with her children even a, i mean looking back i'm 82 but looking back uh i'd rather live in a tent than have my children be without their mother mm. that's that's probably one of the biggest regrets i have in life is uh 
not realizing that I was 23 years old. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I think that, I mean, I still, uh, while my wife was alive, I'd still open the door for her in the car and, and things like that, the traditional things. And the man supporting the family, mm -hmm. uh, at my age, you can imagine, I'm not too much into uh, what's going on in our culture today. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very disappointing. And I really appreciate what you do here and what you present. And I think... Uh, God, I, his name just went out of my head. You just mentioned him. And Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. I think he's doing great work in helping men be men and not these little weaklings. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's so important what you're doing and what Andrew Tate is doing. Uh, I want to congratulate him and thank him for what he's doing. And I know he's getting a lot of flack for doing those things. But... Uh, It'll, he's planting seeds, and I'm sure quite a few men will uh, will grow from that, you know. You mentioned regretting that um, your wife worked. How did that affect the kids? Well, they're fine now. I mean, uh, but I'm sure it affected them, and I still remember when we dropped them off at a babysitter mm -hmm. and how they reacted, you know. <laughs> It was more how I felt by their reaction looking back. Mm -hmm. uh, my children are fine. I mean, because <clears throat> we we raised them kind of traditionally. My wife and I were both young when we got married. So we grew up together. And a lot of people, a lot of people getting together nowadays, they, they're already, you know, they already kind of set in their ways. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and uh, and then it's hard for them to uh, to adjust to each other, whereas my wife and I kind of grew up together, you know. Where and, did your uh, did your kids get married? Yeah, they're all married. Oh wow! Okay. My oldest daughter going on thirty three or four years now, and my youngest daughter thirty years, and my son uh, is uh, twenty five years. Wow. And what do you think so, your family did differently than most people? I mean, even um, I think the the people in your kids' generation, like half divorced. So what, what did you see different about your family than outside? I'd say that um, we were really involved with my children. I was lucky. I was self-employed so I could go to their school events, their sporting events. I drove them to school and picked them up many times myself. So we were close. Um, I was there for my children mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important yeah. that uh, the father's there and the mother's there. And You know, my wife and I had our little skirmishes, shall we say, our arguments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, that's life, you know. Yeah. I think, uh, I, I don't think any relationship, at least in my experience, is uh, is healthy without a little bit of, fighting back and forth, you know, yeah. kind of, I mean, it's just my experience, you know, my parents seemed like they argued, you know, and it was terrifying for me, but my, uh, but they stayed together till one died. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think, I think the traditional ways, like I put in the comments, uh, back to the 1950s type of thing, you know? Yeah. I, I think the route on is pretty, pretty dangerous. I don't see it as a healthy or a, I'm not happy for my children and grandchildren and my great grandchildren, you know, I'm not happy what they're growing up in right now. And I pray for sanity to return to the Western world. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for calling in and giving your perspective. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize that I, I thought I had to call in, right? <laughs> no, it's I a saw, Zoom. <laughs> I saw this thing, right? And I said, oh, I'll click on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Zoom. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. 
what part all right guys <laughs> once i get a tips from him you need a man <laughs> guys i'm taken i've told you <laughs> you guys are so annoying i get it i get it <laughs> um the point of yeah i'm so glad someone i i wanted um people from like the older generation it's tough to get them on shows sometimes um thank you grandpa based Do we have anyone else? No. no. Okay. Okay, guys. Um. Well, pearls, pearls. I'm, I'm going. I'm gonna go to bed early tonight. I think. Um. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. We're gonna do an earlier show. I have practice. I have one more week of practice. Then we can stay around the same time. I'm gonna be in, um, Dallas for pretty much all of May. Do you guys want me to do like a, what time do you guys want me to stream? You guys like this time? I was thinking about going a little bit later. Someone else just joined or we just cutting it off. <laughs> Can, is there a camera? Yeah, they have the camera on. All right, all right, we'll do one more. One more and then this is it, guys, this is it. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good. Are you at a school? No, I'm at work. I'm 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 leaving work. I'm done with work, but I I saw your show and I was like, "Hey, I'm a Pearl fan." <laughs> so, from your point of view, what part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Very good. Uh, faith. Faith. I think that the foundation of a good relationship is um is faith. I'm I'm ca I'm a Catholic convert, okay. married 25 years with one 19 year old son, and like the gentleman before me, I am very concerned about the uh, dating world. I, I wrote a novel recently and was doing some investigations to understand the modern dating world. And boy, I'm very happy I'm married, <laughs> and I really mourn for the loss of. Uh, relationships between men and women. And I think that the foundation has to be faith. And I'm, like I said, I'm Catholic and my wife is a Filipino uh, conservative Catholic. I think a lot of men would do themselves a favor by not engaging in any relationships with, with hard left femin feminist people mm -hmm. and looking to conservative um, Christian women and uh, I think you would do yourself a favor and women would be do themselves some favors to reassess if they are feminists, you know, or the hard left kind of feminist reassess uh, what they value, mm -hmm. because ultimately having children is a merger of values. And we want to put those values into the next generation. And, uh, you know, there's so much idolatry in the culture where we worship ourselves, money, all these things that are unworthy vessels for our faith. And uh, so that that's what I think the, the main thing, we really need to conserve the church. And I'm a Catholic, so I'll say Catholic church, but yeah. um, that is, is is essential, essential to a stable society. You know, I think I read a co really good comment. Somebody said, traditions are solutions to problems that we forgot we had. Oh, that's a good comment. That's really, really, good I thought it was a great comment because all of these institutions that are so subject to our individualist attacks in the society and tearing down, we tear them down. And then we we're surprised when that we are, where's the institution to fix this problem? We look around and, and that's a lot of these institutions that have been destroyed. And then all of a sudden we need them and they aren't there for us. Mm -hmm. they, they exist for a reason. Um, so I, I remember what the difference between a conservative and a liberal when you come at a fence in the middle of the road, somebody just says, what's this doing here? And they tear it down. Whereas the conservative says, wait a second, what's the purpose of this fence? And and pauses and is cautious when they before they destroy the institution. So um Do you think there's any saving the Catholic Church? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I actually I think the Catholic Church is is very strong and vital, especially in traditional societies. Yeah, the or Ameri Orthodox are a bit better. 
Well, you know, the because the the churches that tend to cater to the whims of the fashions mm-hmm. are losing populations. The churches that are strong, the churches that are are the ones that emphasize traditional values. Now, I, I will say that I'm in Florida, and Florida churches are full of old people. Yeah. Uh, the youth have lost have lost a little. They've lost the values of what is church for. Mm-hmm. Um, but that takes parents. And, you know, and this is sort of one of these cycles. We get in this cycle because I was raised by a single mother mm-hmm. and from one years old. But I one of the things that I said I do not want for my son is to have a single parent child. And so I've committed and my wife is very traditional and conservative and Catholic. Mm-hmm. So those that's the foundation of marriage, I think, is faith and putting your faith in God and not in all these values that surround us that blind us and confuse us. Faith is the foundation of a lot of the problems we're having in society are loss of faith. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for calling in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I saw someone else. Did they have their camera on? Mm-hmm. Hello. Hi. Can you Hi. hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. What's your name? Victor. Victor, where are you at? I hear an accent. Um, well, I'm I'm half uh, English, half Spanish. I'm I'm in Spain right now. Okay, cool. Uh, what parts of traditionalism are worth conserving? Well, uh, I'm not for for arranged marriages. What what I would argue is for like um, the problem that we've had in the West is feminism. I think if you look at our grandparents' generation, they met, there was some attraction between them. And mm-hmm. uh, as I've heard you point out sometimes, like it took about three months to get married and they got married. And and that was it. I don't really think that, especially our grandfathers, that they were these kind of people that felt like heads over toes, they in love heads over toes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a musician, and uh, I think, like, looking at other other cultures, um, like, the West has more freedom, and we have more creative, creativity, like, and you look at some cultures, like the Chinese culture, and, um, like, they're good at imitating, but they're not good at creating, I mean, like, it's like, creativity, yes, and in the West has some some good aspects Mm -hmm. and I think that I'm not the kind of guy that would like to I look at the fresh and fit show and I see the these girls on there if if maybe based on looks I would pick some but but then they start talking I I wouldn't pick anyone I I like meeting someone in person and get 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 to know them Mm. so you think that like, so what aspects of traditionalism do you think we can use in the future in this society? Well, I mean, the thing with the 1950s is that um, um, it, was a prof- it was a prosperous era in the West. The West was recovering from, from the Second World War, and it was a prosperous area, and men had, were, were earning money. And... Um, one kind of went into their traditional gender roles. I mean, mm. if you had to court a woman, there would be like some process and that, and some dating process. But what well, everybody had like the family values in mind and um, traditional uh, gender values, and everyone would go into like there wasn't all this degeneracy in the West and all these like that women started pushing it all started with the female vote then it went on with other things and now in 2024 we got everything we've got we've got but uh, if we like some how went back to getting all these things that feminism has pushed i think that society would be more organized into going into these like traditional values and um gender roles. I, I don't know if, I, if I'm making a good point at explaining myself. Mm-hmm. So you think that it would be better if we went back to the 1950s? Is what you're saying? Like that era? Well, like I mean, more traditional? if you look at um, the, 
Sorry? Like more traditional is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but uh, I mean, if you look at the, like, the testosterone rates, I mean, uh, they've been plummeting like hell. Yeah. And uh, you look at photos of, of, of marriages in the uh, 1950s, you look at the husband in, in those photos, it was like a um, high testosterone male, and you could tell that the female respected the husband. Yeah. Now, in 2024, what wife respects her husband? None. Uh, I mean, I think, that, I think there's tons of aspects that just play into the divorce rate and many of the things that are going on today. Mm -hmm. The uh, plummeting in testosterone rates, uh, women not respecting men, and um, things like that. I mean, it, it's feminism that has since science was pulled on everyone that women are equal. And well, women started losing respect towards men. If you look at uh, decades ago, I mean, I've heard Myron from Fresh and Fit mention this, that the woman must respect you. And you look today in 2024, mm -hmm. what woman respects her husband or partner or whatever? That's why we have partnerships, because women don't respect men. In marriages, you have to respect the husband, and the husband was the mm -hmm. authority of the marriage, the authority of the house, the authority of the uh, over the children. And I, I don't think, like, uh, if you want to call it romantic love, was what was the problem? You like, you met someone, you went through a dating process. You like, there was some some report going on, and you you would say, "Hey, let's get married." I'm I'm with you on the point of. Uh, not taking the knee. I don't know if I heard you once mention, uh, I think I heard you say, um, you should just say, hey, we're getting married or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I would get rid of the taking the knee thing or mm -hmm. that. Uh, that's a total gynocentrism. I think you're 100% right. But I think, I think it's better to have the freedom to meet someone like mm -hmm. you saying, there's some, no, like what would, not what's going on today. Today is total degeneracy, total, total madness. Uh, I mean, in the 1950s, what would happen? You would meet someone, you would notice some report going on, and hey, you'd say, hey, let's get married. And women would come from a two-parent household. They would know how to cook. They would know how to cater to men and all this. And you would say, hey, let's get married. You went, you got married, and you had children, and, and that was it. Well, thank you for calling in. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. I think we have some more now, right? People always, they always get shy in the beginning. We got to get like a music track to play, I think, for people to, um, okay. Yeah, let's do another. What part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Hello. Um, Hi. How could you, you doing, put, Pearl? Could you put your camera down? Yeah, I've tried to figure a place to put it. I don't exactly have a lot of spaces for this because I'm usually on the job, which I took a break right now to be off the job to figure out how to speak to you. Because I was watching you on YouTube, and YouTube doesn't have this camera option. Oh, okay. So I think a lot of problem right now is a lot of people don't understand where this whole thing came from. Mm -hmm. The whole thing from the very beginning, feminism started it all off. Mm -hmm. People think feminism was actually about equality, and it wasn't. Women were actually held in a higher regard than men. Mm -hmm. The reason, the way that they led women is like you say all the time, through their emotions. Just like bad boys get a hold of women because they know how to manipulate their emotions. And once they're done, they toss them aside. That being the case, certain number of no pick me's, I guess you could call it, women got mad at men because they weren't getting picked as wives. Mm -hmm. They were getting tossed out. So they started the feminist movement, but there wasn't enough of them. So they had to trick normal women into thinking that they were not equal. And how did they do that? Through voting. But the reality of it was the reason women didn't get the vote is because they didn't pay a price to vote. They weren't conscripted into military to be gassed, stabbed, shot, maimed, disemboweled, decapitated, or scalped. And that's if they were lucky. If they were unlucky, 
they would get taken as a POW. And you already know what that is. I know that because my dad was a POW in two wars. Mm -hmm. So I heard all the stories and he was a combat medic. Mm -hmm. With that being said, you can imagine what they would do worse to women than right. what they did to men if right. they got caught. That's why they weren't allowed to vote because they didn't pay a price. And even the men, it was an illusion to them mm -hmm. that, hey, you can vote for exactly who's going to send you or not send you to war. And that was an illusion because the reality of it is Industry is what's been running this nation. They use politics like a mechanic would use a pair of pliers to have the politicians move the army to do this for them and that. Back in the old days, it was about strip mining and strip logging. And in modern days, it's a little bit more about Pfizer and all them. They get the politicians to pass the laws that let them do what they want. That being said, feminists used that to manipulate women through their emotions of not being equal, when in reality, we held them in higher regard. We did not want them to pay that price. Mm -hmm. We thought they were better than that. They could work, but they didn't have to work. But once they got those women tricked, industry came on board and they said, hey, look at this movement over here. If we support these women, we can double our workforce. If we double our workforce, we devalue the worker. We don't have to raise minimum wage as fast as inflation's going. And that's happening again right now with the illegal immigrants being allowed into the nation. Right. They're increasing the amount of workers to deflate them like I say, if you have the same number of gold as you do copper, gold becomes obsolete. It's pointless. It's worthless. Mm -hmm. Same thing with anything in life, including workers. And that's what women don't understand. But they got led around with this bull crap. And the reason why in history, why men, the fathers, chose the husbands for the daughters is because women can be manipulated through their emotions. Again, going back to that's why women fall for the bad boys. Mm -hmm. Because they can manipulate that emotion by being chaotic and extreme, but they're never the dependable ones. And then they got this OnlyFans crap, which has given them access to more things than ever. That's one thing that should be destroyed, that type of crap. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. Women can work any job that men can. They can go work in construction. They can go work on the streets. And I've worked everything from offshore oil rigs to law enforcement to street construction, to framing houses, to framing skyscrapers. The only time I've ever seen a woman there is holding down, I don't know what, holding down their butt on the back of a truck mm -hmm. because they can't do the same work. Some choose not to, and that's why it's mostly dominated by men. Others get in there and they sit on their butt all day, which means they're taking away a position that a grown man we could actually get help from, and they sit on the truck and take that pay away because the law states that they have to be hired. Now, keep this in mind. Name, they're talking all this crap about straight white man privilege. Where is it? Where is the law that says straight white men have to be hired? There's laws for minorities and there's laws for women. There is no law for straight white men hmm. because it doesn't exist. The straight white privilege crap doesn't exist. And they talk all this stuff about the slave reparations. Number one, I don't know if you know where the word slave came from. It's from the Slavic region. It's because more white people were taken as slaves than any other race. More white people died fighting that than any other race and are still doing it. And you know who enslaved the black people? Their own people took them in because they couldn't make it in their society, tried to pay for their bills, couldn't do it. And it's still going on today, by the way. You can actually talk to some people from Africa and they'll tell you it's called indentured servitude. But then when they can't hold up that anymore, they sell it off to somebody else. Back in that time, they sold it off to ship captains. They sold all that off to ship captains. Some of them would employ them as ship deckhands. Others are like, well, I can't really afford any more deckhands. But you know what? Let's take it to the Americas and see if they'll buy it. And when they came over here originally, it was under a contract where they spent seven years working their butt off on a plantation. And at the end of that year, they were giving land and resources to do it themselves. Most of them chose to stay in the servitude of the people. And you know why? Humans like routine. They love routine. When you take them out of a routine, it makes them uncomfortable. That's a humanistic psychological trait. So they stayed there until the Democrats came in and said, hey, no more seven-year contract. Your slave's the end. That's what created the war between the North and the South. Because the North are like, hey, that's not fair. Everybody deserves a chance for freedom. Everybody deserves a chance for a happiness and equality. That's what strung the war, the civil war from the North and the South. But you've got to understand where all this crap's coming from. Modern day people and simps 
who want to sit here and argue stem cell the reason why these 304s are doing that. Men like Andrew Tate, mm -hmm. he's sitting here making all this bullshit. Men can go around and do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Says who? Body count counts for women and men for two different reasons. For women, it shows a conscious decision to or not to be committed to one relationship. If you have a high body count, we're not even getting into the pair bonding part. Just your conscious decision to have multiple bodies shows you do not have a level of commitment to commit to a lifelong partner. For men, if a man's running around sticking his you-know-what and everything, does that show any kind of self-control or self-discipline? Are you asking That's me? That's a question. Oh, that you're asking yeah. me? Um, yeah, if a man is running around sticking his thing and everything, does that show any self-control or self-discipline? I, self I really, I don't ascribe morality to it. I can't change the world. I, I just, I look oh, at no, it. Oh, no, I'm not talking about morality. I'm just yeah. talking about straight facts. I don't believe in religious bull crap. That mm -hmm. stuff's made up to control people. I used to be Christian mm -hmm. until I got too many answers, too many questions. Mm -hmm. Like the 28 books that are mentioned in the Bible that are not there. Who took them out? Who gave them permission to take those out? So then I traced it back to the second religion, oldest religion, People think Christianity is the oldest. It's not. It's not even in the top five. What it's composed of is Judaism and some paganism. Judaism, number three, oldest recorded religion. Mm -hmm. Zoranicism, one that got lost, is an Iranian religion. You'll find that in Judaism. You go back before that, the first oldest recorded, not oldest religion ever recorded, is Hinduism. And even it was to control bad people from doing bad crap to good people, to give them fear because they did not fear law enforcers, or the laws of men. They were killing the very men that were making the laws. So why would they have anything to fear? This gave them something to fear. And in order to give them something to fear, they had to sign something that they could see in reality mm -hmm. as a way to validate that religion. So natural disasters, natural events, blinding out the moon, earthquakes, all that was the side effect of God's pleasure or displeasure in their thing. And that's why they originally caused it. However, con people who didn't want to work decided to take control of religion and use it to con people out of their money, time, and effort so they wouldn't have to work. Instead, they could have people give it to them. Well, if you don't do it, the gods are going to smite you. They're going to not let your crops grow. That's the way it was. But you've got to read all of the religious texts, not just believe the liar. Someone robs a jewelry store. You go ask them, did you rob the jewelry store? No. Of course they're not going to say they did. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to go around from all the other witnesses and get the statements from them. Same thing with religion. That's why I say keep religion out of it. Mm -hmm. This is why anyone who uses religion loses fights when they've got fact. Mm -hmm. Because people will look at the fact and they'll look at the religious aspect and say, which one's the weaker side I can destroy? If I can destroy either side, I win. And they'll go for the religion. Mm -hmm. Because it's the easiest side to destroy. And then when the religion drops, the sand erodes away from your house, the house comes down. So do Stick you to the fact. So do you do you think that there's any sense of traditionalism, I, I guess, that can come back now? Or what, like, what's your... What's I think your... it's going to be really hard because you've got social media. Gives women access to more people. You've got these simps who don't have, pardon my French, who don't have the nutsack to be a traditional man. Who don't have the, the nutsack to say no. Right. Like you were saying, women are posting these uh, photos to other men. Mm. Why aren't those men saying no? Hey. Stop that shit. Right. But instead, they're accepting it because they're simps. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to support themselves. They don't know how to be self-disciplined. They don't know how to do any of that anymore. Mm. Now, me, I was raised in the state system from the age of seven. Lock up. Because of this, how I look all screwed up, I took a lot of beatings in my life. I've had every bone in my body broken except three. By my dad, the one I told you it was a POW, mm -hmm. he knew how to torture us, and then he knew how to put us back together so he could do it again. Then at seven, we got put in the state system, not because of how he treated us, but because he went to prison for something he didn't even do. So in lockup, it's just like prison. If you don't know how to read a threat that's coming, you're dead. So you either read people or you die. So I learned to read people. I watch them. I watch how they react, their facial expressions, their smirks, their body posturing, everything that they did. And then the words they spoke and then saw the reactions that they did after that. Mm -hmm. Now, I've been to 39 states, 10 cities in each one. I speak two other languages besides English, not because I went to school, but because I lived in areas I had to leave that. And I read people. And that's how I know what I know. 
that and the fact that I actually went through psychology because I wanted to help people, only to find out that the woke ideology says if I don't identify someone as a meat popsicle, then I can get sued, fired, sent to jail, re-educated like Jordan Peterson, you know, how he was re-educated. He was, he was, Stuff like he that. was re-educated? What does that mean? He was sent to re-education as part of his sentence. Oh, to get right. the band lift in Canada. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That. Okay. Because he was speaking truth mm-hmm. and people can't handle truth. Mm-hmm. So that cancel culture is in here. And so you're social saying social media is the biggest problem, to be honest. So you're saying because of social media, it's never coming back. Look how much women have access yeah. to things. They can yeah. get anything they want. Women running around talking about, I made six figure. All you did was spread your legs and stick a cucumber up your <laughs> uha, and you're making six figure. I don't want to hear about that crap. You don't know what it's like to actually be out there making six figures and doing the work. They expect 20-year-old men to make six figures. It takes time to accumulate that wealth unless that money is already in your bank account because of your parents. Right. That's why 40-year-olds are choosing younger women. 40-year-olds, it takes them about that long to get there. Mm -hmm. And then once they get there, they're like, okay, now I can support. I give women what they want. Mm -hmm. And so they look, well, I don't want a 30-year-old who's been ran to, has five kids, and three baby daddies. That's just a lot of drama you don't want to sign up for. That's why right. I tell men, do not pick a woman with a child unless that dad of that child was killed or died somehow. That's a decision that was not hers. Right. Other than that, don't do that because you get all the responsibility. You have to pay for them, diaper them, get them into college. But when it comes time to discipline, no, you need to shut off with that shit. And the dad gets involved. And then you have a lot more drama. I have a brother that went through that with two women. So I've seen that. I helped him raise his second set of kids. Once he got them raised in college and everything, one of them didn't go to college because they didn't listen to us. Instead, got his ass put in prison doing exactly what we told him not to do. Right. So this is a personal experience. Like I said, I've been over the U.S. all over the place. I've seen this shit happen. Some people have talents for basketball, football, chess. My talent was reading people. Mm -hmm. And I don't understand how – I called myself common sense. That's what my name means. It's Latin for common sense. Because what I speak is common sense. I don't see it as something that's really out there. And it's already in the history books, but people can't be using Google. Because Hitler destroyed information by destroying books. All they got to do to change information now is change it on Google. And people are so lazy, they won't go down to a library and read a book that was there before Google was up. Right. Like the link that I put in there about feminism, they said that Feminism said they were going to destroy the patriarchy by destroying men and what they hold value. And the value that they said that men held more in regard than women was family and monogamy. And they were going to do it by promoting sexual promiscuity and homosexuality. It's in their litany. This is what they said. So why would women choose to destroy men by supposedly attacking what women hold dear? They wouldn't. That's not logical. They would go after what men hold dear, and they said family and monogamy. Right. It is what it is. It's in the history books. It's right there for anyone to read. It's just a matter of who's going to actually do the work, and that's the biggest problem we got in society. Too many people Mm -hmm. not willing to do the work. Right. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I've actually always said that men are the more monogamous ones than women, so it's interesting. Huh. Yeah, it's like I said, it's in that uh, someone – I preached this on another platform, Mm -hmm. and I told them about that. And then someone finally told me, hey, you know what you was talking about? It's there. And they showed me a a website to it. What's it called? um, It's a government website. I can reprint it, but I don't know where to print it on the Zoom thing. This is my first time using Zoom. Yeah. I usually watch you on YouTube. Yeah. Well, if you email it to me, it's just just pearlythings at gmail.com. So you can just email it. I'll look at it. Okay. Um, Yeah, because when I saw that, I'm like, yeah, it's exactly what I've been saying. Yeah. Wow. Um, But you don't think it's coming back because of social media? As long as social media provides a platform by which women can access multiple men across the entire planet, they think they are more important than what they are. They're like, I'm the prize. Well, how are you the prize? What are you bringing? Right. What exactly are you bringing? The only thing we really want is low body count because it shows a sign of you being willing to commit to a conscious decision Mm -hmm. and peace. Right. And you've seen the women out there, they can't bring either one of those. Mm -hmm. Instead, they want us to excuse it and pardon them and go on. Now, me, I got lucky. Uh, My first wife was a piece of, you know what? My second wife was very good. No body count, zero body count, was holding off on it. 
knew the games that men played because her father told her about the men that games play or the games that men play. Mm. And so she was up for it. So in reality, after my first wife, I didn't want anything to do with them anymore because that left a real bad taste. But then I started seeing her from outside the whole thing and saw exactly, you know, that she wasn't like the rest of these women that are on here today, mm. that she had different values. She did have a level of commitment because she wasn't willing to just jump in bed with anybody. She didn't care what kind of games you played. Mm. But the biggest problem with that is social media offering all this access. And when you roll the dice that many times, you're going to get simps. Right. And simps are only interested in one thing, the same thing Andrew Tate runs around doing, mm -hmm. sticking his crap into whatever was walking. Right. It is what it is. And like I said, just like women have a reason for not being like with high body count, men do too. You put your crap in everything. Like my brother, he does that. He sticks it in everything. He has no self-discipline, no self-control, impulse. Mm. And that's what it is. You biologically yes we are designed to spread our seed but as a human you use your intellect to control your basic needs and your basic functions mm -hmm. so men are just as guilty like uh myron and uh, andrew take both say well men can do that you need to accept it no because you say leadership is a high quality thing mm -hmm. well for high for leadership you often have to take your relationship into areas you don't want to go and that requires self-discipline self-control to weather that even though you don't want to you weather that situation because you know it's the best outcome in the end mm -hmm. so i would argue anyone who can't keep it in his pants doesn't have self-discipline right that immediately eliminates leadership role well thank common you. sense to me yeah i understand thank you for calling in all right you have a good day now you too bye-bye someone said <laughs> freaking name um no, tommy, wait. oh tommy's here okay uh, okay, so Tommy. Tom, Tommy, your video is lagging a bit. I don't know if you can see. check that. Yeah, I, I saw him come in. So I was like, I'm trying to. Um... Also, guys, make sure. I don't know if I should have said that email on live. <laughs> I'm like thinking about it. Um, uh, guys, make sure you like the video. That's the most important metric um, that YouTube uses to push out these streams. Also, guys, please consider signing up to the Audacity Network. Um, that is the only platform. I, I do not, people can have opinions that disagree with me. I don't care, it doesn't matter to me. So I really want it to be a free speech network that is funded by the people, for the people. It's 10 bucks a month. Um, you can support a noble cause. So, you know, sign up if you can. Um, is Tommy ready or no? Uh, we have Tommy Sotomayor. Ready. Okay, good. Hi, Tommy. How are you? Talking about I'm I'm well. How are you? Why do I look so janky? I I don't know. It's your internet. <laughs> no, stop it. No, no, it isn't. That is a lie. It's like that is not my end. It is on the top. It looks fine. You gonna sit there and blame me? No. I don't know. I don't know. The no. last the last people came in pretty clear. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know. This is not right. Do you see how they don't blame me for this shit? I mean, if, no. you, if you want, I mean, guys, you got to hit his cash app so he can afford Wi Fi. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you blame this on me. Well, I'm up here looking like I'm back in 1998. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just no. saying. <laughs> so um, I don't know if you saw the topic today. Um, we want to talk about what aspect of what aspect of traditionalism is worth conserving? And I was curious what your thoughts were. Okay, I think um, women with low body count, I would love to conserve that. <laughs> don't want whores. Don't like them. Uh, I also think that expecting a man to be able to be a pro protector and a provider. There I go, shit. Yeah, I see there. <laughs> uh, being a, a man to be a perfect, uh, protector and a provider. I actually like that. Like I, I would like for my woman not to work if she doesn't want to. Now I if she if she wants to work, that's fine. But I do like the idea that she can spend time with the children and stuff like that. That that's worth protecting. But I think it it's outdated because these women now, if you let them sit at home, they're gonna be screwing like the mailman and the pool guy and 
now you see all these teachers. Why is nobody talking about the fact that there's a proliferation of teachers who are sleeping with the students and it's females, not the males. And yet the males are looked at as predators. Why is no one talking about that? That the true predators, females. Um, I would assume that um, one of the things I would like to keep is that the women be able to teach the children. I think that's an amazing thing to be able to do where they are able to be home with the children all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I just wish that we valued that. Uh, now people want to send their kids to public school. Oh my God, now somebody's ringing my doorbell. I didn't mean for that to happen. Uh, but I just, I think that there's a lot of parts of keeping family together. That part of chivalry, that part of the old school what we had expecting some things for the man and some things for the woman, the separation. I think those are worth keeping. I think we need to stop trying to say that we're all the same because right. we're not. What do you think about arranged marriages? I think they're better than actually people picking for love because when we pick for love, we don't know what love is. Love is this nebulous thing. And when people picked our mates for us, they had they had our best interests in mind. And when our parents did that, they had our best interests in mind. When we pick, we don't have our best interests in mind. I can look at myself and all the people that I pick. I'm a horrible picker of women. I oh, wow. should never be allowed <laughs> to pick who I want to be in a relationship with because I suck. Mm -hmm. Well, so I have a question. With arranged marriages, how would that work with single moms? Do you think they could do that? Because now it's like a bunch of single no. mothers. So do you think they could do arranged marriages? Would it still work? No, they couldn't even <laughs> arrange the guy to have the kid. With, so how could they arrange a marriage? Single mothers <laughs> should be seen and not heard. As a matter of fact, they shouldn't be heard or seen. Um, I, I think single mothers should have someone come in and help them out. But I also think that they shouldn't, that we have allowed the single mothers to have this high thought of themselves, especially in the <laughs> black community. They get to believe that they're better than women who don't have children. Right. And it is the weirdest thing in the world. It's like saying, because my car has been in a wreck, I'm going to sell it for more than a new car. That's <laughs> what these women are doing. I hate to do this. I got to go let somebody You're in. Okay. Let, one of the other, let one of the other people in You're fine. that has a, full mouth full of teeth and I'll be right back. Okay, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here. All right. Let um we can let one person come up and then we'll bring back Tommy if he comes back. Oh, it's just Tommy. <laughs> well, guys, um maybe I'll give him Is he coming back or no? I was going to ask him if he thought he could, because I, I think he has kids, if he thought he could pick, if he's bad at picking women for himself, if he thought he could pick, you know, for the kids. That's interesting. No, you know what I mean? Like, would, would it, can I have some water blessing? I'm kind of thirsty. Could you bring me the Brita? All right. Thanks, blessing. You know, what part of traditionalism is worth conserving? Well, what do we do going forward? I was hoping for some creative. They say, Tommy, come back. They miss him. Guys, you know what I did today in the gym? I'm almost at two plates for squat. I know everyone says Pearl. It's not feminine to lift weights. I don't care. I like... You know. Oh, he's back. I am. <laughs> I you... thought it was my lawn guys, but it was just Dairy Queen. This oh, segment. Wow. What did you what did you get? I got a burger, onion rings, and a blizzard. Mm hmm Oh nice. Because I can't cook. Well, at least I don't feel like cooking. <laughs> So what, so I was wondering, cause you said arranged marriages work better. You, you have kids, don't you? Do you have kids? I do. Why are you getting in my business though? No, no. Why? I was, I was going to ask if you thought, cause you said you couldn't um, pick a, a girl, like you were bad <laughs> at picking, but I was like, could, could you pick for your kids? You think? <laughs> I think I could. Let me tell you why. <laughs> okay. Because it's like, you know, when they say you can't see the forest for the trees, 
like when you're picking for yourself, you're you're viewing it in different ways. If I was picking for my kids, and then I have girls, I don't have any boys, but I have girls, and I think I would be able to pick better for them because I would look for guys who look just like me and act like just, just like me, and I would exit them out immediately. <laughs> like any dude like me, this sir, he you will not get a shot. So I but because men are honest. We know what it is that we see. Of course, like I, I like hoes, but I don't want hoes. But because I like hoes, it puts me in a weird spot. So I end up picking a hoe that's a nice hoe. Like I like a hoe with a heart. Like a, 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 a pretty woman. <laughs> okay. You, 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 you mess up. And when you do that, I think when you pick him for yourself, you look at, well, does she have a nice rack? Uh, things that don't matter. Okay. And then when you pick for your kids, though, you would actually look for a guy or a girl, whatever it was, but I have girls. But you would look for someone that could uh, provide the necessary building blocks for a relationship. When I pick, I don't pick the necessary building blocks. I pick how big is her butt, how small is her waist ratio, how big is her breast. And that's the weird thing to try and build something on. But I know I need help. I need Jesus, uh, Allah, anybody that can help me. And I'm willing to be told what to do. So I think I could do a better job of picking for my for my daughters than they could pick for themselves. I've seen a couple of dudes that they bring home. Actually, my oldest daughter seems pretty good at it. The guy she's with is a nice guy. He's I'm not gonna lie, he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but um uh, I think that males would do a really good job because we care of who is with our daughter. We don't want to see our daughter in a bad position. Mm-hmm. So Arranged marriages would work in that instance. And I believe as far as like with your boy, I would be able to tell my boy, don't make the same decision that I made. Don't look at um, the booty ratio to waist ratio as the most important thing. And we're very superficial, to be perfectly honest. We're not even, if you look at what men are dealing with, we're not really trying to have a marriage. We're trying to sow our oats. Right. And so do you think that, like, what do you see, what do you predict in the future? Like, what, what do families look like in the future? I'm kind of a pessimist, where I just think it's going to be single parents and maybe the rich will marry, but for the most part, it's just single people. Well, what do you think? I heard you talk on another show, and it's like they got mad at you for saying, they were like, well, why are you like, and you're like, look, I'm not saying that things can't change, but I'm a pessimist, and I see where it's going. Yeah. And you're kind of like me, where I look at that, like, don't get mad at me, because I see where it's going. Why should I paint a rosier picture than, than what Well, I, I think it's mean. I, oh, the thing we did with Sneeko, yeah, that's what he was yes. coming at me. But I was like, I think it's mean. One, they were trying to say that Muslim girls act super different. And it's just not my experience. I live in a primarily like Muslim area and I don't see any difference between the way Christian women, Muslim women, I, I, I see the same patterns of behavior. So this, mm-hmm. this cell that religion is going to save you. There's no religious woman in divorce court. And <laughs> I, you know, and I know, and, and I'm like, okay, well, Social media is here. It's not going to go anywhere. And so it's maybe slower in some parts of the world, but I, I don't I, I don't see it changing. But then I'm the bad guy for saying prepare for the worst. But I'm I'm hopeful for my life. I think my life's going to be great. But <laughs> no, and, and, and I was with you. I kept thinking the same thing. I said, well, if you ask me, where do I see things going? I don't see them going in a positive direction for the collective. The individual, sure, the individual can do a lot of things. Like right now, when the mark, markets drop because of what's going on in Israel, there are people who their money is correct and they don't have a problem. But if other people, they're struggling, they can't buy milk, they can't buy eggs. Right. So it's just different. And you're being honest. And I think people don't, people don't know how to reconcile the two. They don't understand that you can be honest about your situation and their situation and the two not look alike. And I'm with you on that. When it comes to what I see as the future, I am very afraid because I don't see more and more people wanting to get married and more and more people wanting to do something stable. I see fewer and fewer people wanting to get married and fewer and fewer people wanting to be to do something stable. Uh, I don't know if you saw the video that I put, that I sent out where the girl was talking about the plan B and letting the guy <laughs> skeet in her. And I kept thinking, 
You just saw that video. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. And she's yeah. sitting there yeah. and it's like, no one finds this problematic. The mother who um, smothered her child because she no longer wanted to be a mom and the judge let her off and she's a free woman now. So basically what he's saying is abortion can happen eight months after birth. Weird thought, but yeah. it worked. And I think that once the ball has went down the hill, the snowball has went down the hill, I don't know if anybody can stand in front of it and pull a Sonny Bono because, well, Sonny didn't live. He hit a tree and he did. So I think that's what's going to happen. Most of us who stand in front of that ball is just going to get ran over. I think that something dramatic has to happen to change the course of history because right now the course of history says everybody feels like they can live without each other. They don't feel like there's a need for community, a need for family, a need for any type of um, unity amongst a group. And when you do that, if everybody feels like I can survive on my own, I'm an island, it's not going to get better. They're pushing people to feel like um, Angel Reese. She put out a video, a text, or whatever it was, Instagram, and she said, She's the Bayou Barbie when she looks like Sid the Sloth, but she calls herself the Bayou Barbie. <laughs> and she said, which is funny because we're talking about cultural appropriation and Barbie's a white girl. And But anyway, she said, what name should I be called when I go to Chicago? Because that's where she got drafted. Mm -hmm. Mind you, she hasn't played a second of basketball in the WNBA, not one second. Yet Caitlin stays on what I do on the court is what I'm supposed to be known for, not me dressing up a certain way when I'm not on the court and not all this other stuff. Well, Caitlin is overlooked. Yeah, because the character is rewarded. Yeah, especially yep. especially with women because media, it, <laughs> because, because media is really the only way they'll make money. It's, they're not going to make that much in the WNBA. So it's either sex or media. Yeah, and, and everybody's yeah. mad because when you looked at what happened with Caitlin, her contract is for $76,000 a year. And a lot of people are saying, well, that's good for a part-time job because, you know, they only play three months a year. But the eyes in which she's bringing, the fact that she's sold out a game before she's played a game, she should get paid more than that. But they're saying, well, what about the black girls? What about Angel Williams and all this? I was like... No one knows these chicks. If Angel Williams walked in my house right now, I would think she's here to deliver some more food from Instacart. I don't know this woman. <laughs> so it's a thing. Michael Jordan was Michael Jordan. He made the NBA at that point. It's bird, magic, same thing. Caitlin is going to make her money outside of the court. Right. But they're making something that it's not. And that's what the world has become. Things that aren't what they say they are, you know, like men who aren't women, but they're saying they're women, mm -hmm. you know, like children who are allowed to take puberty blockers so they can be whatever they want. The world says, do as thou wills. And I don't think if you can preserve marriage under that umbrella, you can't. It's not yeah. conducive to you. Well, and traditional men are punished. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think traditionalists, I don't think you can go back until you switch the laws. Because, like if I, I agree with what um, Shaw said in the, I don't know if you were, you saw Shaw, he um, used to calculate child support. Like he used to work mm -hmm. at um, a child support office. So he, he comes on the show a lot. And he said that he wouldn't date a chick that didn't make close or marry a chick that doesn't make close to the same amount of money or more. Because it's like, if you retire your wife, you're on the hook for more child support. He, he used to do the calculations, so. That's actually very smart, because if you uh, make the same, if you do separate, she can't really ask you for anything, because y'all make the same. Well, or you, um, could, you could sue her for child support. <laughs> I, think, I think the laws will start changing when men start getting women on child support. <laughs> Because there's nothing, there's nothing that we do better than complain. <laughs> women don't want true equality. And the no. only time you can show women what true equality looks like is to show them what true equality looks like. I saw a video today and people were upset. I yes. can't believe this guy hit those women. But I watched those women say, get up, come fight, you punk. Oh, yeah. And then when they said he got up and he fought. Yeah. And I said, so wait a minute. They challenged him and he accepted. How is he wrong? Yeah. 
Well, I think, when, <laughs> yeah, when we start getting the same consequences the men get, I think that's when you might see traditionalism return because then you might see us give up rights, but I don't think it'll happen until we start getting the same responsibility. Soon and it's up to me. Get, get these like, hoes on child support. Go to the gym, Kings. You can get, you can get a yes. sugar. <laughs> No, a lot of these I've seen that right. in London. I've seen so many personal trainers date lawyers. <laughs> 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 they just go to the gym. They're like, this is way easier. Let me get this rich chick over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody, I, I just, I just wanted somebody in your comments to say, why did Pearl smile when I said booty to waist ratio? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, I'm just, I, I'm funny. just curious. <laughs> I'm just curious why men, I guess when I say I'm curious, I know the, I kind of know the answer because society tells you as a man, it doesn't matter what women are asking for. You're supposed to still give them the upper hand, but why won't men just, I had a saying, I said, marriage is for broke men. I really believe it is. I don't think that a man worth a damn worth any money should get married. I think it's for broke guys. If you living on a woman's couch, go ahead and marry that woman so you can get half if she leaves you. If you uh live in, if, if if you know you driving her car and her insurance is in your uh your insurance is in her name, go ahead and knock her up, fella. Get just go ahead. And just you know, do you know problem. guys that do that? I I don't know <laughs> any because I'm old. <laughs> but when I was young, if I knew what I know now and what I've been preaching yeah. for the past, I'd say 20 years. I would have said that but when I was saying it before men looked at me like I was crazy. Like I was a joke. I was almost like, um, I remember Bill Maher had to deal with someone who told them that eventually men are going to start saying that they're women and saying they can have babies. And that somebody put that show up, Bill Maher laughed. And it was 20 years ago. We're here now. So he laughed and the left Bill Maher thought that that was ridiculous. You know, here now. you know what's interesting about that topic? It's actually mostly women um, that say they're men, but people only care about issues when they affect women. So even though 80% of trans are actually, forget YouTube, um, are actually women um, that became men, not the other way around. Well, because they only celebrate the effeminization of men, they can't celebrate the masculine, the, the, the masculinization of women. Because if the society is trying to destroy masculinity, mm -hmm. it doesn't want to see masculinity in any form. Right. Even if it's a feminine, uh, if it's a woman trying to convey what her idea of masculinity is, it's still toxic. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because people care so much about the, the trans issue with sports for women which I agree, but I think it's interesting because when women invade male spaces, no one cares. Like, I guess bars used to be for men. It was just for men. The Barber shops. Yeah, yeah, the workplace. The man is yeah, who did that. We, we, we can't have locker room talk. Locker room talk yeah. has to be invaded by women. And, like, if there's some woman that would be good enough to play in the NBA, when she went out there and she started busting dudes butt, they would say, ooh, woman beat you. But if a man goes and do that in WNBA, they wouldn't say, ooh, man beat you. So it's like women will win. It's the same thing in a fight. If a woman slaps you and if you just sit there and take it like you're supposed to do, they say, ooh, that woman slapped you. You a punk. If you fight her back and beat her up, they don't say, ooh, you shouldn't have fought that man. Women have a, we can win, but we can't lose. It's the same thing that happens with blacks in the United States. We can say whatever we want to the whites. If whites even respond in kind, they became racist. Yeah. Just in kind. Yeah. What you said, I just repeat it back. You're racist. You're supposed to allow me. It's the equivalent of a child hitting an adult. The child's supposed to be able to hit the adult. The adult can't hit the child. The wolf is supposed to be able to howl at the moon. Damn if the moon howl at the wolf. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to have a problem. Right. And I think that there's too many systems in place that allow people who normally wouldn't have a voice to have a voice for us to go back and go back to the place where jackasses kept their mouths closed. Right. I don't know. I, I I don't sell dreams, and I think the conservatives just want to sell dreams, and that's what irritates me about them. Is I, I I think they care about facts, but not when it comes to divorce, and I don't really get it. 
I, I don't know why, or child support, child custody, marriage. Like, why do you think that is? Why don't conservatives, like the Daily Wire and them, care about the facts when it comes to men's issues? Because they still want to keep women around. If you like women and you like sex with them, <laughs> what you will do is overlook some things so you could do it. That's all it is. If we could go back to the caveman days, you could take a big stick and hit somebody. Then, of course, they would never worry about that. Mm -hmm. But because there's freedom of free will, you have to then say enough to make them feel good. And one thing that makes everybody feel good is hold men accountable. If you make sure you hold men accountable, everybody likes you. If you hold women accountable, then there's a problem. And whether you're conservative or liberal, you have to make sure that men are your mate. Because you got to remember, when the conservative guys on the uh, Titanic who said women and children first, they didn't say whoever the fuck is the best and the strongest should get in these boats, but they should have. Right. Why would the most richest men on earth have to die so the whores they sleep with? <laughs> <laughs> no, Think about it. I was thinking about that, actually, that <laughs> why did they put them on the life raft? Because I'm like, okay, if we were on a boat and we had Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and the women they were married to. <laughs> Or like that Grimes chick. I was thinking about this. I'm like, right, let's just say Elon Musk and Grimes were on that boat. Really? Grimes? That chick should have Elon Musk's spot? See, Mackenzie, I'm good. Mackenzie listen, Bezos? Listen. <laughs> like, I'm good. And people don't, this is why people don't want me around. Because I ask the questions that make you think logically, not emotionally. Logically, there's no way Jeff, the chick Jeff Bezos is sleeping with should be saved while Jeff dies. No way. Uh, Guggenheim, during that, he died. Uh, there was like five of the richest men on the planet. No way. Died. Like the women they were sleeping with survived. That's insane. Right now, if you had LeBron what was, James... What was his kid? name? Guggenheim? What was his Guggenheim, name? Guggenheim, yes. Guggenheim. What did he do? I know I know too much stuff. I don't know why I know all this ridiculous history, but I do. And you and he was there with his mistress. Oh, and his you? mistress got on? Yes. <laughs> she was pregnant, too. Wow. Guggenheim. So, but, but if you think about it, uh, oh, no, no, that was John Jacob Astor and his mistress. But that was another one of the richest men in, on, on the planet. Guggenheim was there with his wife. Uh, they both, she would not leave him. And I, and I love him. I, I, I said it wrong. I, got, I don't, please forgive me, Miss Guggenheim. She refused to leave her husband. She died with him. John Jacob Astor was there with his um, side piece. And she was with child. She lived. He died. But again, there were three other men who were on there who were the richest men on it, it, on earth wow they passed this well. that's why a lot of people believe in the conspiracy of that titanic was sunk on purpose oh and all these people there and boom you get to it's a transfer of wealth if they die it goes to these women but if oh. you think about it lebron james for as important as he is if you had two people who could die lebron or savannah lebron would tell you I'll die, let Savannah live. But what the fuck is Savannah going to do right after LeBron dies? What does she do? What did Kobe's wife do right after Kobe died? Nothing but be Kobe's ambassador. Right. Wow. I did not. It sucks, but. I didn't know that there was like billionaires on that boat. I didn't know. Oh, yeah. But I, I literally was I was thinking about the Titanic the other day because I was like, why do the women get on first? Because if the head of the family goes down, everyone goes down. So if you really believe the men are the head of the family, why would they? Thank you. And look at it this way. Say if I'm 45 and my wife is 45 as well. I can still get women pregnant and further my line. She's probably hit menopause and can't. Right. Why would you say let her survive and not me who can further my line? Remember what happened with Job in the Bible. Not sure if you know anything about Christianity. But Job, after uh, the devil came in and took his whole family and all of his servants, you know what Job ended up doing? Getting another wife and more children. Right. So we don't, we don't respect the logic part of it, and that's what the conservatives do. The conservatives fall in line with 
we got to make women feel like they're more important than men, but they're not because I can get five women pregnant in the same day and produce five children. You can only get pregnant once. Do you, per nine months. Do, do you agree? Uh, when I was talking to Michael Knowles, he said that men's purpose should come from family. And I think that's a terrible idea because women can leave at an instant and we do. And so I think putting your purpose in family as a man is just not a smart decision. Do you think I'm wrong or right? You're 100% right. Because even Paul talked about if your mission is something greater when you have family in the Paul and the Bible and, and, and even in the mafia, if you're mission is something greater having family and children leaves you compromised right whatever your mission is i can just go and pick up your family and kids and hold them hostage i can stop your mission in life by holding that which you love dear if you don't have that then i can't stop you from achieving your goal uh whenever someone says family is most important that's saying that you your job is to take care of someone and to be selfless instead of selfish. And we tell men to be selfless, and we never tell women to be selfless. Women are allowed to be selfish. If you look at most of the things that women, um, that they advocate for, it's only for them. Abortion literally kills a man, uh, kills a child, and um, takes a man's decision, whether he wants to have it or not, out of the equation. It says... What she wants is important. Nobody else. Even a life. Name the thing that women advocate for that actually helps build a community. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no, Everything nothing. they advocate for <laughs> builds themselves and typically hurts everybody else in the process. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't mean to sound like this male chauvinist, but logic actually sounds like a male chauvinist because men are more logical. If women were as logical as men, we wouldn't even have this thing called women and children first. And I tell people about the whole women and children first. They need to look into that a little bit deeper. When it says women and children first, it's even saying women are more important than the children. And how did that happen? But again, you see these women are able to, a woman's right to choose is to destroy a child. But if you're three months pregnant and I push you down while I'm robbing a bank, you know what? And you lose your baby. You know what they'll charge me with? Murder. Right. But how? Because you can go and get it taken care of, and it's called a right to choose. Right. It takes away the responsibility from the woman. And even to be able to say these things, a right to choose instead of murder. And they got mad at Bill Maher, which I love Bill Maher for saying it. He said, oh, no, I'm okay with it. But it is murder. That's what you get from men. Men are okay with certain things and we're honest right. about what it is that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Women aren't honest with what they're doing. You catch a woman cheating on you, what does she do? She blame you for why she's cheating. Oh, yeah. That's what they always say. And same if they leave marriages. It's like, but why did she leave? Yep. <sighs> it's like, I feel like interviewing a thousand whores just like changed me <laughs> as a person. <laughs> I'll never go back. <laughs> I was like, why are the guys complaining? And then I went through a year. I'm like, oh, my God. See? <laughs> yeah. and I, I always ask women this. Have you noticed that women say I don't hang around with or I don't like other women, but you don't hear men say they don't like other men? That tells you how women really aren't good people because most women don't like other women. I know. I think we're more violent. I think everything we say about men, we are. I think we're more sexual and more violent. Ooh. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's projection because it's like if if you consider abortion murder, one out of three women have done that. And the sexual stuff, I noticed when the media caters to women, it becomes more sexual. Where like if you have a guy watch a movie like Transformers, yeah, they'll get the hot chick with the big boobs like Megan Fox or whatever. But it's not the main part of the story. But when women. Thank you. Well, when women watch a movie, it's like Fifty Shades of Grey or some romance movie with, you know, a really intense sex scene. Like if there's a sex scene in a male movie, it's just like quick. I mean, boobs, hot chick next. You know, <laughs> like yeah, we don't want to see all that prolonged. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, like, think about how disgusting soap operas are. Now, I'm not saying that it's X rated, but if you look at soap operas, it's constantly women cheating and it's only for women watching. 
Soap operas are for women. Yeah. So why is it so much cheating by women in soap operas? Why is it so much sleeping with the gardener? Why is it so much sleeping with your sister's boy? Yeah, this idea that women are pure, I, I, I think it's, it's just not. It's not. <laughs> it's not real. I think women are the more sexual ones, the more violent ones. I think, imagine if women had the strength of men, that'd be a scary world. That's why I said, uh, and I'll leave you with this. Uh, I'll come back, but I got to eat these onion rings. But um, I always asked, I said, do you know what's stopping men from taking advantage of women? Other men. Yeah. If men agreed with you could hit a woman over the head and whoever you hit over the head and drug to your cave, that was your woman. Women couldn't do a thing to stop it. So that shows you that men are more benevolent than women because women now have laws that allow them to screw men over in divorce and child support. And there's no group of women to stop it. There's right. no other half of women who are doing the same thing that men do, which is prevent you from being screwed over in a large amount. Again, in the Western world, men stop other men from doing things to women. Right. Because if it wasn't for other men, men would have free reign. Right. Well, thanks for calling in today, Tommy. Thank you. You know, I'm I'm excited to just to see you and talk to you. It makes me happy that you'd have me up here. Yeah, whenever. You know, we do the show same time pretty much every day. So if you ever want to call in on the topic, just, you know, let me know. I'm going to <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna get on your nerves. You're going to see me up here too much. <laughs> okay, thanks for Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. Um, I think that's it for today. Um, what part of traditionalism, traditionalism is worth conserving? My answer is none of it. I think women got to start earning men back. I think we got to start doing more for men as opposed to waiting for men to do stuff for us. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, let me know what you'd like to see as future topics, future guests. And um, I want to keep doing these call-in shows. So let me know if you like them. And when I'm in the U.S. next month, let me know if you want me to do a late show. There's a chance. I might do it if you guys request it, like, you know, late, late. Let me know. Like the video. Subscribe. Ring that notification bell. And I'll talk to you next time.